Good morning, everybody. Morning, Ronald. I hope you guys are all surviving. It's week two. We're almost, we're halfway done with week two, the morning sandwich. Morning, Tidy. Good morning, Mad Bloop. Let's see how many people we got here today. 11 people online right now. 16. Good morning, flambéed cup of noodles. Good morning, J.R. Conrad. What other classes do I teach? Um, I teach mostly freshman and sophomore level courses. I teach uh, EAS 240, which is another programming course um, in C and C++. I teach that in fall. Um, usually electrical engineers take that. Uh, I also teach um, one of the 199s. I teach section L in fall. And then I teach small groups. Do I listen to music? What's your favorite genre? Oh gosh, this, this has changed over time. Um, in high school, I listened to a lot more alternative. The older I've gotten, the more it's like folksy pop. <laughs> Um, the artists I've been listening to, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out which, um, which, I don't know, music to listen to. I've been listening to Ed Sheeran, um, the other day, yesterday, I was listening to a Zed radio. I was trying to weave in. Paramore's great. I really used to love Paramore. I haven't listened to a lot of them in a long time. Um, but they were definitely one of my favorite artists uh, a while ago. Um, I I just see your Twitch names. I just see Sandwich Twitch, Tidy400, Ronald ZH, all of that. Um, I started listening to a Shawn Mendes radio, but I decided I didn't like a lot of those songs. Not a big fan of his latest stuff. I also feel a little weird listening to music. I turned 30 this year. And it is a little weird listening to a bunch of 20-year-olds. <laughs> Morning, Joey. I should listen to Paramore. I'll listen to Paramore this afternoon. It's a good idea. <laughs> I've noticed that between the ages of like 25 and 35, 40 depending on how well you take care of yourself you don't really change that much I definitely look older than I did when I was 20 but I don't know it's still just weird to listen to a bunch of 20 year olds for music and think oh they're so young now just like you guys you guys are so young now Don't let that problem get you. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. My mom's pretty awesome. She's 60 something now. I don't know. My goals are to to be a little bit like her when I get older. Okay. Class is starting. 
Um, so let's go ahead and begin. Uh, as you guys know, your homework. Um, you can come to whichever Twitch session you want to come to. I will do both because I'm required to teach at both times and I want them to be equal and equivalent, but I don't care. Just like I don't care which one you watch later on either. It's a good question. Um, okay, so as you guys know, your homework is due tonight, um, which I've, we've gotten, I've gotten lots of questions. Um, I saw a nice thread on Discord from last night. Um, hopefully you guys are going to office hours. Here's our table of office hours, so make sure you guys take advantage of this. Um, so today there are office hours all day. Like I said, when you go to office hours, um, different people are doing it different ways. Sometimes it's only one person at a time. Um, I try to do my office hours, so it's right after this class. Um, I try to do my office hours by letting everyone in and talking and discussing together. Um, but a lot of you guys are having problems, it seems, with parentheses. I encourage you guys to go, like if you're having problems not getting the right answer, like if C, part problem P1 underscore C, that's a really long expression. Go through it, take out any unnecessary parentheses. Remember, if you have A divided by B, you don't need parentheses around that expression. Um, so go back, uh, take out everything, that's not all your parentheses that are unnecessary. Um, that will help clean things up um, a lot and help for debugging and trying to figure out what's wrong. Um, but other than that, it seems like most of you guys are on the right track, which is awesome. So, today, or are there any questions really before we begin? I don't want to get too much into the homework because we have functions to go over and I want to make sure we have lots of time for functions because they do tend to be challenging for students. Um, but are there any questions really that I can quickly answer that anybody has? Just type them in the chat. Okay. Okay. So today we're gonna to be talking about functions. Like I said, functions are typically challenging for students. I'm gonna do my best to break down how to write a function, how to use a function, um, and what is going on behind the scenes. Um, so that's a lot to cover, but let's go ahead and jump right in. I went through these notes in the videos, just identifying what a function is. It's an isolated set of code. We've already been using the built-in math functions. Yes, absolutely. Um, we're gonna write some functions. I got two functions queued up to write uh, and hopefully we get through all that. Um, so you've already been using functions. You've already been using like the sine function. You know that when you type sine of pi over eight or something like that, this data is sent to some math function or MATLAB function. It does the calculation behind the scenes and then it returns the answer. Notice the code that does that calculation is nicely packaged, nicely isolated inside of this file called sign. We can also write our own functions. This is an example of what those functions look like. Um, this is a template uh, that MATLAB provides. I don't necessarily like this template, but it does outline everything that a function has. It has this first line here. It's called your function definition line. It has some nice comments that give us some context about the function. It has some code that actually does all of the calculations. It's the, the code that does something uh, and then an end. We'll see ends quite a bit. Every function has an end, every if has an end, every switch has an end, every for has an end, every while has an end. All of those things we will go through. But it has an end. Just indicates it's the end of the function. In general, so that's all background information. I want to focus on the practical part of um, functions and writing them. There are four main questions, four main items to address when writing a function. The first one is determine a descriptive name. We can name our functions that we are writing, whatever we want. In general, it's the same rules for naming variables. So 
So only letters, numbers, underscores. In general, that's true for pretty much everything we get to name for MATLAB. So it has a name. Uh, it also has input parameters. So input parameters, um, these are just variables that are going to exist within our function. When we choose input parameters, think about what data is needed in order to perform the calculations. So in math, typically when you're calculating something, y equals 3x plus 7, to calculate y, you need a value for x. That's the type of data we're talking about, and we'll see an example of that. And we can have as many input parameters as we want. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, obviously, you have to type those all out. You have to use all of those. So you want to make it appropriate. And then we have our output parameters. So output parameters are variables that are created within the function that just store the result. So what are we calculating? What are we calculating? So for this one, x would be an input and then y would be an output. We need a value of x to calculate a value of y. And then um, lastly, we have our function body. So what calculations do we actually need to do? Keep in mind, our output parameters are going to be used in those calculations. So our output parameters are going to appear on the uh, right-hand side of our calculations. And then our output parameters need to be calculated. So they're going to appear on the left-hand side of our calculations, or our equal side. And then really we can create any other variables we want and use any other MATLAB code. So let's go ahead and look at some examples of this. So I'm going to do a lot of writing on paper today before we even get to MATLAB just to go through these steps. So here I have a, your homework is going to be a little more descriptive than this, but essentially I just have this prompt that says, write a function that calculates the surface area and volume of the frustum of a cone. Funny word, but this is the frustum of a cone. Uh, I have R1, R2, and height. And these are my two calculations. So this one here is surface area. And this one here is volume. So let's go through these steps. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So the first thing is determine a descriptive name for the function that represents its functionality. So if I am going to write a function that calculates the surface area and volume of the frustum of a cone, I can name it lots of different things. You can name it um, calculate SA volume frustum. Keep in mind, you want to keep it relatively short, but descriptive. So I will name this frustum SAV. Frustum surface area volume. Like I said, you can typically name it whatever you want. For your homework, you will be given the name of your functions, so you don't necessarily have to worry too much about this step. And then it says determine what input parameters are appropriate. So I'm going to look at these calculations, and I need to identify what information do I need in order to do these calculations. So I'm looking at Essentially, for your, when you're doing mathematical calculations, a lot of times you're looking for your unknown variables. So in here, in these calculations, I know what pi is. So I don't need a variable called pi because I know what pi is. It's already built into MATLAB. But I know that I need a R1, a first radius. I know I need an R2, and I know I need an H. Notice those are the three, essentially, items of this calculation that are up to whatever the system is. So there's different frustums with different parameters. And that's really what you want to think about when it comes to choosing uh, your input parameters. What information do I need in order to do this calculation? Sometimes these variables are going to be constants. And you don't really choose constants as your input parameters because those aren't going to change. 
So in here though, I know that R1, R2, and H, those are all, those can change depending on your system, depending on what your frustum looks like. So that's a good indicator that those are gonna be my input parameters. So R1, R2, and H. Pi is a constant, I already know what that is. And then everything else, one third is a constant, um, so everything else is fine. And then determine what output parameters are appropriate. So what am I calculating? So essentially, what is the goal? What, what, what information do you want the user to have back? Given your input parameters, what's the point? What are you calculating? And if you notice at the top, it says calculate the surface area and volume. So that's a good indicator that surface area and volume are my outputs. So sandwich, you're getting into what does it look like when we write our function? And I will get to that in like literally one minute. Right now we are just thinking about setting everything up. So we're even thinking about before we get to writing, before we get to our MATLAB syntax, what are some of the background information that we need? Okay. So what is what is my output parameters? And when really we can have as many output parameters as we want as well. Just once again, keep in mind how long you want your function to be, what it should include, um, and yeah, you have to type it all. Okay, so I've got my descriptive name. I've got my input parameters. I know what I'm gonna calculate. Now I need to actually write the function body. So I'm gonna stop here and we are gonna go to MATLAB and actually write out this function. So I know you guys can't see both of these at the same time. Um, that's fine, but keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, let's go to MATLAB. So when we write a function, we are really just writing another script file. You could technically go to new and type function. It will give you that template that I showed in the notes. Uh, and that's perfectly fine. It tells you essentially all the pieces that you need. I'm not the biggest fan of this. So I'm just gonna say new script file and we'll start from scratch. Okay, okay so when we write a function, the first line of our code, literally number one, it needs to be number one, is going to start with the word function. Following the word function, we have open close brackets. Note, they're not parentheses, it needs to be brackets. We are starting to get into a, a little more complicated code um, where everything needs to be exact. I mean, everything needed to be exact before as well. Um, but when we say at brackets, that means it needs to be brackets. Inside of these brackets are our outputs. So I'm going to identify what variables are going to store our outputs. If you remember, the outputs are gonna be surface area and volume. So it's gonna be SA and V. Literally, they're just variables. You can come up with any words you want, anything you want. I could say surface area and do my camel case and volume. It's up to you, it doesn't matter. They are just variables. In theory, the variables should describe more or less what they're gonna contain. I'm gonna go back to SA just so that everything's smaller and compact. So after the word function, in brackets, we enter in our um, outputs. Then I have an equal sign. And then goes the name of my function, F-R-U-S-T-U-M-S-A-V, Frustum Surface Area Volume. Following the name of my function, I have open close parentheses. Brackets are for my outputs. Parentheses list my inputs. So inside of here, I'm gonna list the variables that are gonna store what information I need to do the calculations. So I need R1, R2, and H. Like I said, you can name them whatever you want. Radius one, radius two, height. You could name those those, it doesn't matter. And then MATLAB's gonna give me a whole bunch of warnings, variables aren't used yet, um, but we'll ignore those until the end. And then, Every function needs an end. Okay. So just good practice, type your end. I'll name these back to R1, R2, and H. The hard thing about functions is 
I don't ever need to say in my function R1 equals, R2 equals, H equals. Good question, JC Cubes. It needs to be line one. You cannot have anything else above the word function. It needs to be line one. Any comments should go underneath there. So what happens here is these variables, they're arbitrary. They're not defined yet. They're not, there's no value stored here. I will explain how these values or these variables store values when we get to running and executing the function. For your homework, typically for your homework, when you write functions, um, you would write them, so you can write them in here. Well, I'll get to comments in a minute. I'll get to comments in a minute. Okay, we will write comments at the end uh, of writing this function. Okay, so now inside this function goes my function body. Inside this function, I want to do my calculations. I need to calculate surface area and I need to calculate volume. My calculation, my equation for surface area looks like this. Pi times R1 plus R2 times SQRT of R2 minus R1. Give me half a second. Okay, there's my calculation for surface area. Semicolon, always put semicolon. Semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. Even if the homework document says, leave it off, put it on. Yeah, that's just, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be graded on your semicolon usage. It's just good practice to always put semicolons. My calculation for volume, one third times pi times h. Oh, I feel like I'm in typing class when I'm typing in front of students. It's like, don't mess up. Okay. So there we go, there's my calculations. No, nowhere in this calculation, nowhere in here did I say R1 equals something, R2 equals something, H equals something. I'm just gonna use those variables, assuming in the back of my mind that I know R1, R2, and H are going to contain proper values. You don't need to define them. In fact, do not define them, it will give you errors. Notice SA and V show up on the left-hand side of my equal sign, they are defined. R1, R2, and H show up on the right-hand side. They are used in my calculations. Before we get to comments, I wanna illustrate um, what's happening behind the scenes in this function. Uh, so in order to do that, I need to save it. I'm going to save my function. MATLAB will give you a recommended, whoop, hold on. MATLAB will give you a recommended name for your file. Notice, my recommended name is frustumsav.n. Choose that. It needs to be your name of your function, needs to be the same name as the file. That's just the way MATLAB is set up. It needs to be exactly the same. So if I have a function named frustumsav, it needs to be saved in a file called frustumsav. Notice if I change the name of my function, MATLAB gives me this warning. This warning states that function name frustum sav underscore changed is known to MATLAB by its file name. So these should be the same. The file name and your function name need to be the same. Okay, comments aside, our function is done. That's it. It does the calculations. Given R1, R2, and H, it will calculate SA and V. Now I'm gonna open up a new script file and I'm going to actually use this function. I'm gonna use this function to do a bunch of different calculations. In order to use a function, you essentially just need to type the name of the function, open close parentheses, just like we did with sine. If I wanted to use the sine function, I would just type sine pi divided by eight. It would send pi divided by eight to my function, do whatever calculation, and store my result in whatever I told it to, store my result in x. Same thing, for using your user defined functions. You type the name of your function, and then now you are going to send it some information. You are going to send it some values 
that it's going to use for R1, R2, and H. For your homework, the name should be the same, and that's mentioned in the document. The number of inputs and outputs, they can be, they're completely separate, completely different. It's just whatever makes sense to send, to calculate whatever makes sense to do those calculations. So now I'm going to send my function some information to use for these calculations. So I'm going to send it a value that I want it to use for R1. Let's say 2.5. And then I'm going to send it a value to use for R2. 3.2. And then a value for H. 4.4. .4. And like always, I need a left-hand side of my equal sign. Notice this function returns two pieces of data. It returns two calculations. So on this side, I need to have two variables that are going to store those calculations. So I'll call it surface area one and volume one. These are completely different variables than these. They're going to store the same values, as we'll see in a minute, but I can name these whatever I want. Joey, that's a good question. Once your function is saved, you can use it anywhere. You can use it in the command window, in another script file. It doesn't matter. Uh, keep in mind, though, your function needs to be saved in your current folder. <laughs> so now let me save this as test. And let's run it. I'm going to uh, take off the semicolon just so that we can see what our answers are in the command window. Okay, notice I have an error. In line three, I have an undefined variable R. Oh, I forgot. I'm missing, that's R2. Okay, save that, run it. There we go, I have results. So my surface area, which also shows up in my workspace, is calculated as 131.58 whatever volume is 112. yes there needs to be brackets here if you take those brackets out <laughs> um matlab thinks these are two lines of code it thinks you're trying to just print out the value here and then this is a second line of code so you need brackets notice the things that don't show up in my workspace are sa v r1 r2 and h the only thing that shows up in my workspace are the variables that appeared on the left hand side in my script file this is a function file because it contains a function so the only variables that show up in my workspace are the ones that that i created in my script file functions it turns out are completely isolated code it's completely isolated so let me go ahead and step through um, this code here. I'm going to hit my debugger and press run, and we're going to step through line by line what's happening. So here I run. So before I execute this code, note it's calling a function. When we call a function, hold on, there we go. Uh, when we call a function, I'm going to step in. What happens is R1, R2, RH, our input parameters are initialized store the values that we send it. So here in my workspace, notice this workspace is just for frustum SAV. It's just for my function. Where H is assigned a value of 4.4. .4. H was assigned a value of 4.4. .4. Note, H is my third input. 4.4 .4 was my third input. R1 is assigned a value of 2.5. So R1 gets this number. R2 gets this number. So inside of my function now, R1, R2, and H are assigned values based on how I use my function, what values I sent to it. Then it does my calculation for SAV or SA. So now SA inside my function contains a number. V now contains a number. And then my function ends. When I hit end in my function, what happens is whatever was calculated for my outputs are then used to assign to these variables. So note in my function, SA has a value of 131, V has a value of 112. When I step out of my function and go back to my script file, 
notice all of my variables inside of my workspace disappear because I'm not in my function workspace anymore. I'm in my script workspace. And now surface area contains the same number that SA did and vol1 contains the same number that V did. Uh, no, the, the file does not need to be open for MATLAB to recognize it. You can close that out. Okay, so back to one of Ronald's questions. Now I can use this function as many times as I want to do those calculations. So I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm going to send it some new numbers. Let's say I want to send it 3, 4, 5. I could do that. I could do it again. I mean, you want to change these ones too. I could do it again here. Another set. I could calculate 12.7, 19.3, So now I can do these three sets of calculations, get three different sets of an an uh, sets of answers using the same function where all I did was just add two lines of code as opposed to adding six lines of code plus whatever variables I need to change. Not of what if you called the sir area the same as before when you call it SA. So note um, the variables inside your function are separate from the variables inside your script file. Whatever you call these inside your function are only inside your function. Whatever you call them up here, it's whatever you want. Like they're, they're, they're separate. These are completely isolated from these. It's just these inputs are used to initialize these inputs. And these outputs are used to initialize these variables as my output. I could also call this SA and V. That's fine. But no, these are different from these, even though they have the same name. Another thing is um, you can have separate variables. So rad one, let's say it's equal to 7.2, rad two equal to 10.4, and then height equal to 15. And then you could call your function. So sa4 v4 equals So your inputs here can be separate variables. They could be expressions. You could say like three divided by eight. It's gonna calculate that first and then use it to initialize H. But that's how you would use a function. So these are called function calls. These are function calls. This is where you are using your function. And you've already done a bunch of function calls when you use nth root, when you use log 10, when you use sine, cosine, tan d, all of that fun stuff. And there we go, you can write a function, yay! Uh, some final notes for writing functions is it's very good practice to add in some comments. Um, Matthew, what do you mean R? There's no R in this equation. Here, there was an error. If you're looking at my command window, that was an error. I fixed it, I had R here instead of R2. Last thing to mention inside of our function is it's a good practice to add in comments. Um, so the first comment inside a function should be the name of the function, followed by a short description of what you're calculating. So frustum SAV calculates the surface area and volume of a frustum of cone. called the H1 line. It's just a very short description. And then you can add in your author, add in your date. And then I prefer that you also add in three additional things. First, I want you to add in what's called a use case. Essentially, how do you use your function? Notice the way I use my function literally it looks the same as I did here. It looks exactly the same. So when you type your use case, just copy and paste this first line in. Okay. It essentially to the user identifies how many outputs you have and how many inputs you have and what the name is. The second thing is describing the inputs. 
So R1 would be defined as the smaller radius. I mean, you already know you're talking about the frustum of a cone. So you, these can be as descriptive as you want. Um, that's a good question, Tidy. Hold on one second. R2 would be the larger radius. And then H is the height. And then lastly, describing the outputs. Some of it might be self-explanatory, still retype it. Surface area. And this is the volume. Those are all the comments you really need. It does not need to be more complicated than this. Identify briefly what your function does, identify how to use it, what your inputs are, and what your outputs are. This will get more complicated as we go through the class. Okay, so I've saved my function. Um, if you watch the videos, you notice that uh, one of the ways to find information about functions is using the help command. So I could say help um, and root, and it would print out essentially a brief description on how to use nth root. The reason why we have these comments in our function is because we can say help the name of our function. Oops. And it will print out, um, it, well, here, it, it notice I made it, uh, an error. It will print out all of that information. Okay. Notice Frustum SAV is bolded because it's um, capitalized here. So it's just a way to, to get help um, and to for other people to be able to use your functions. One last thing, tidy. So one last thing to mention is you cannot run a, a, a function file. So let me just make that big. I cannot have my function file and then press run. It will tell you not enough input arguments because function files aren't meant, they're not script files. They're M files, but they're not script files. So if you want to use your function, you need to call it in a separate script. You can also call it in the command window as well. I'll do that just to simply test it. Um, so you can't just run a function file. That's not allowed. If you want to do debugging, you could comment out the first line and then say that R1 equals this value, R2 equals this value, and H equals this value. But obviously when you're done, you need to take those out. Um, for your functions, for your homework, you will not be graded on comments. Um, for your programming project, you will be graded on comments, just like it is for your homework. But be, I mean, this is, this is, this, we did it in class for like, it took me what, a minute, two minutes to type everything up. Um, so it's just good practice. And there we go. We wrote our first function. Yay. Hopefully that helped clarify the process. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. Okay, let's go back to our notes. So, okay. So uh, here it said use, I used a bunch of these values, but with one function, we can easily calculate five sets of values with um, what? One, two, three, three lines of code in our function, and then five lines of code to call it. So eight lines total versus having to go in and change R1, R2, and H um, manually all the time. Okay, like I said, whoops. Let's write another one. This one's a little more complicated. So it says it's a little more complicated in, calcula in calculations, not in function writing. So it says write a function that calculates the frictional head loss HL in pipes where the friction coefficient F is calculated with the given equation. Okay, so we are calculating frictional head loss. Determine a descriptive name. I don't know. Calculate. HL? Really? They'll be told, it'll be told to you what to use in your homework. For this one, we'll just say calculate HL. In general, you want to avoid um, abbreviations, but we'll just assume that this is only going to be used by people who know what HL is. Determine what input parameters are appropriate. There are a lot more variables in here. A lot more variables. In order to calculate HL, I need to know what F is, but F is calculated with that equation. I need to know what L is. I need to know what D is. I need to know what V is. I need to know what G is. G is actually my gravitational constant at 9.81 meters per second squared. So that's a constant that will not be an input parameter. 
but L, D, and V aren't constants. Those are unknowns. Notice we don't even need to know, I don't even know what L, D, and V stand for. I think L, I can't even remember. I put this together this morning and I can't even remember. Um, but we don't even need to know what those are in order to write a function. We just know I need that information. I kind of need to know that G is the gravitational constant, but that's some background information. Other things I need to know. I need to know what epsilon is, whatever that is. D, same thing here. I need to know what that is. RE is calculated with this equation, which uses V, D, which those are the same things up here. And then I need to know what V is, or uh, I think that's Greek letter nu or something like that. E, D, R, E, E, D, R, E. So everything else already um, is one of the unknowns that I need. So Joey, the function allows us to use a complex equation. Yes, it's automatically going to plug in those numbers that we send it in to do the calculations. So my inputs are going to be L, D, V, epsilon, and nu. So that's five inputs. Those are the five pieces of information I need in order to perform these calculations. Everything else is a constant or a number or calculated with another formula. And then what are my outputs? My outputs really is just HL. That's all I want to know. What is HL? And then I can write my function body. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one. Let's go over to MATLAB. Oops, wrong one. Let's go over to MATLAB. Okay, once again, new script file. It's a function. Start with the word function, followed by open close brackets. Inside my brackets go my outputs, HL. Name it whatever you want, whatever makes sense. H underscore L is Dr. Ali's favorite, so you'll see that a lot in the homeworks. I don't like underscores. They're just added things to type, so I'll just name it HL. Equals, name of my function. Calculate. HL. Nice, simple. I could do an underscore if I wanted. Followed by open close parentheses. List out my inputs. I need a value for L. I need a value for D, for V, epsilon, and I think it's new. I think the, the V, the scripty V is new. Uh, either way, it doesn't matter. I name it what I want. I'm the programmer. I can do what I want. Then I could insert my comments if I wanted. So... Calculate HL, calculate the frictional head loss in a pipe. List out the author, list out my date, list out my use cases, my use case, my inputs, and my outputs. I'm gonna skip those just because I can't remember what L, D, V, Eps, and Nu are. <laughs> Obviously, you, would, you, you should identify what those should be. But I'm gonna skip those. Use case is literally just copying this. I know my output is my frictional head loss. Anyway, you would type those out. Okay, and then do your calculations. So in my document, I have HL calculated first, but if you notice, I need to calculate RE first. RE is just gonna be V times D divided by nu. I don't need to put parentheses around V times D. That's an example of unnecessary parentheses. I'm not gonna be penalized for it, but if you have a long equation with lots of unnecessary parentheses, that's harder to manage. So I'm gonna leave them out. I don't need them because it, order of operations states that it's going to do this calculation first and then the division. So there's my value for RE. Then I need to calculate F. F is a very long calculation. Let me go ahead and get into notes. I just want to point out, I'm going to start calculating it here. I'm going to start here and then build my way out. Just a, a trip tip for you guys. Um, really there's no one way that you have to do this calculation uh, in a specific order. So I'm going to start with my innermost set of parentheses where I have EPS divided by D divided by 3.7. Once again, I don't need to group any of those. Plus 13 divided by RE. That's my innermost set of parentheses that I'm going to build out. So log 10 
before that, I'm going to multiply that by 5.02 divided by RE. Once again, I don't need to put parentheses around this. All of it matches my order of operations. And in front of this, in my expression, it's EPS divided by D. Then all of this, so that whole thing, goes inside of another log. And you can always break it up into smaller pieces and build it together yourself if you want that as well. I'm just showing you another way to do things. In front of this log, I have another 502 divided by RE times. In front of here, I have another EPS divided by D divided by 3.7. Make this big so we can see it. And then behind all of these, I have another log 10. This whole thing is multiplied by negative two. And then this whole thing is raised to a power of negative two. So notice I started with the innermost parentheses and kind of built out. Um, that's another way that you can check or you can write your code if you're running into something that's a little more complex. Um, but that's another way you can put together a really complex equation. A lot of the times, the most complicated equations you guys will run into are in week one, um, just for the sake of practice. Um, but occasionally you'll run into something, especially if you're your majors, <laughs> you'll run into something a little more complicated like this. And my last one is HL to calculate F times L times V squared, oops, divided by D times two times G. I need to define G. G equals 9.81 common theta meters per second squared. Uh, yes, this is a fluids equation. And every function has an end. Okay, there we go. Inside of this function, I have L, D, V, Eps, and nu. These are defined by my input parameters. I also calculate R, E, F, and I have another variable called G. So this function has some of the variables come in from the user. Some of them are calculated separately. The only one that's returned though is HL. So HL is my answer. Can we use predefined variables creating our equation in our function? Uh, yes, yes, you can break this up. You could say like first set of parentheses, first parentheses is the innermost. Like you can calculate however you want as long as your final answer is stored in your output variable. So once again, notice L, D, V, Eps, and nu are used on the right hand side of my equal sign in these calculations. HL appears on the left hand side. It's defined inside of my function. Okay, so I've got my function. When I save this, remember it needs to be saved exactly the same as the name of your function. So calculate HL function should be saved in the calculate HL script file or the calculate HLM file, not a script file. I can't run this function. I can't just say run. It tells me none of input arguments. It's like, <laughs> fool, you don't have values for LD, V, EPS, and new. You need to test this in a different file, which that's fine. We'll test it in the same file. Let's delete all that. To use the function, I just have an output, uh, which technically when you have only one output variable, you don't need the brackets. I'm gonna leave them in for illustration. When I call my function though, I'll just say out one. Name of my function is calculate HL. And then I'm gonna send it five pieces of information. L is gonna be a value of 26.667. V, nope, D is gonna be a value of 0.15. V is 2.065. Eps. Six, there we go. When I press run, 
Let me clear my workspace. When I press run here, it gives me my output. Yeah, I did that right. <laughs> so given these values for L, D, V, Epson, Nu, note it's in the same order. If you have L, D, V, Epson, Nu as your inputs, you need to type in a value for L, then D, then V, then Epson, Nu. It's gonna use those values in my calculation. If I run my code, notice when I get to my function, L has a value of my first one. D has a value of my second one. V has a value of the third one. Eps fourth, new fifth. It does the calculations. It calculates my value for RE using my inputs. Calculates the value for F using my inputs and my value for RE. Calculates or defines G. Calculates HL using my previous calculations and my inputs. So now when I leave my function, all of the values, all of my workspace here only exists in my function. Only my function has value has a variable called D, EPS, F, G, H, L, L, NU, R, E, V. Those only exist in my function. When I return, when my function gives me back my calculation, the only thing it gives me back is the value that it calculated, is the value it calculated for H, L. Notice, even though my function has, what, five, six, seven, eight, nine variables, I don't have to see those. So it keeps my script file less cluttered, keeps my workspace less cluttered. And now I can copy and paste this and use a different set of values as well and keep going. So just some notation, or just some uh, language. Remember, this is a function call. When you use your function, that's a function call. To use a function, any function, you just type the name of the function, followed by open close parentheses. List out the inputs. And then on the other side, your equal sign, you have your outputs. So notice when I say help rand i, I use that function a lot. It's one of the ways you can get help. It will give you an indicator of how to use the function that tells you more or less what your inputs need to be and what your outputs need to be. A lot of your built-in MATLAB functions besides the math functions are a little more complicated. Technically, you can have a variable number of inputs. So for this rand i function, I could list out the maximum value I want. So i max is the maximum value. So a number between zero or one and 10. And then n is the size and then store that in a variable. There are other ways. So I could have three inputs for this, 10 to five. So with your MATLAB functions, they do tend to be a little more complicated. You will get used to this as you go along. Um, but for our writing our functions, um, it's just follow the process that we just went through. Hopefully I clarified it. We actually went through that a lot, little faster than I thought we were going to. Let me go back to my notes to see if there's anything I missed. Oh, just some uh, notation, not notation. Um, vocab, there we go. Um, so the functions workspace is called a local workspace. The command win or the command window and the script files use the global workspace. Typically, when you run a um, script file, you don't see the local workspaces of the functions. Um, so that's just vocab. You don't really need to know that in order to write a function. Um, variables inside your function are inaccessible from the command window. So if I have a function with a b c. I can't in my script file say a or use a in my calculations. I can't say y equals a. These are two separate things. So your script files and your functions, they're completely separate from each other. You can't use the same um, variable if it's not defined in both locations. Hopefully that made sense. Um, and then uh, what this does is it minimizes side effects. Like I mentioned, it, it declutters your workspace when you run your script files so that you have less variables to manage, less variables where there might be an, 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 an issue. Uh, I think that is it. Yeah, I think that's it. Wow, that went faster than I thought.
Okay, so with that, we'll go ahead and end. I guess it's right on time. Um, so I can stick around for like half a minute uh, before I run to office hours. So is there a shortcut for making markdown lines instead of typing out? Um, not that I know of. I don't know. Google MATLAB multiple comments, um, multiple line comments. Um, I know like in C, it's easy to put chunks of comments. I don't know if there's a uh, uh, way to do that in MATLAB. You can always highlight something. So um, you can always highlight something, right click or use this button up here and say comment. It comments a whole bunch of things at once or uncomment it. So you can use that um, trick in MATLAB. Uh, in, in, so if you're using a MATLAB function, if you're using a MATLAB function, you don't need to know what variables they used inside their function. It doesn't matter what I used here. What I use here is completely independent as long as I know how many inputs there are and how many outputs there are. That's the only thing you need to know when using a function. You need to know what the name of the function is, how many inputs, and how many outputs. That's why in our functions we write the use case so that we know our users know how many inputs there are, how many outputs there are. You, you can use the same variable names, but they're completely separate. They are completely separate. You do not need to know at all what the variable names are inside the function. You just need to know how many inputs, how many outputs. That's it. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. So you can use the same name for that, same variable names. They're just going to be different variables. And that's getting behind the scenes as to how the computer knows what is where and we're not gonna um we're not gonna deal with that um biden can I think uh, uh, if you have an issue with Zybooks, email me. I can look in specifically at your submission. Tidy. Uh, MATLAB Grader has us use different names for the variables and what the assignment wants us to use. Are you talking about for the functions? Like I said, for the, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Use whatever variables you want inside your functions. It's not going to make a difference. Um, in your homework document, I give you an indicator of what your function definition line should look like. But at the end of the day, you can use whatever variables uh, you want. Okay, whoever wants to email me the issue with Zybooks, I will look into it. Um, I do have to run to office hours. So I will see you guys next Monday. I'll send an email out on Friday. Um, but the videos for Friday should be posted. I have to make them this afternoon. <laughs> um, but they'll be posted and you guys can start watching um, the material for what we're going to do next week.